Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the 2018 GTM 540 plug and fly quadcopter from Dayton. In this video I'm going to go over the quadcopter features, show you how to set it up, upgrade the flight controller firmware to the latest Betaflight 3.5.1 and use the recommended settings by Dayton, and then I'm going to head outdoors and test it out using 6S LiPo batteries and also measure its top speed using this GPS speed meter. Inside the box we can find the quadcopter, which is of course already assembled, and all you need to do is to add your own receiver. You also get in one set of Gemfen Wind Dancer 542 propellers, so it is advisable to get at least a couple of more sets. And in this video I'm going to test on the quadcopter these propellers, and also the Gemfen 5149 flash propellers, which should enable us to achieve a higher speed. You also get in two high quality Velcro battery straps with the Dayton logo nuts for the motors, a battery anti-skid sticker, some zip ties, spare connectors, and a simple linear antenna from Amway with an SMA antenna connector. In terms of component, the GTM540 has almost the same parts of the Tyrants 630 which I really like and I also recently reviewed, so you can check out my review over here. The motors are 2308 1950 KV motors from Sunny Sky, they feature an open bottom design and these are very powerful and also power hungry motors so I'm curious to see what kind of flight time I'm going to get with my batteries since using 6 inch propellers on the Tyrants 630 I could get only about 3.5 minutes of flight time using 1500 mAh for its battery. In addition using 5 inch propellers you'll be able to run this setup also with 6S type of batteries. On the center we can find the Mamba F405 stack. The bottom board is a 4-in-1, 40 ampere BLLESEAC and it supports up to DSHOT 600. The center board is an F4 flight controller, it comes pre-flashed with Betaflight 3.3.0 and as I mentioned before, later in this video I'm going to flash it to the latest Betaflight version and use the recommended settings by Dayton. On top of the stack we can find the TBS Unify VTX, it supports smart audio and its maximum output strength is 800mV. This VTX is used also on the Tyrants 630 and on one of my recent flights I got to more than 2 km without any issues, so just make sure to use a good antenna and in case you're not going to use a long range model such as the Crossfire or the Sky R9M, you're going to be pretty much limited by a radio receiver. The VTX is built into this board which features an onboard buzzer and also has a capacitor in order to reduce the video noise. We can find also on the back Two more capacitors, one is a 1000 microfarad 35 volt capacitor which is connected to the ESC and another smaller one which is connected to the flight controller. On the back we can find an SMA antenna connector and the XT60 connector for the battery which I highly recommend to secure to the side of the frame using a zip tie because if the battery leads are going to be pulled in case of a crash the pads can be ripped off which will make the ESC unusable. Finally on the front we can find the Runcam MicroSwift FAB camera which is not the newest camera in the market and it is a little bit outdated but you have to take into consideration that this is not a very expensive quadcopter so they had to cut some cost and I think at least for a beginner and even for advanced pilots this camera will still do the trick. The frame itself is a true X frame, the wheelbase is about 23 centimeters. The distance between the front two motors and also between the front and the back ones is about 16.6 cm and the arms are interchangeable which means that if you break one you can simply replace it however I think it's going to be a pretty hard task because the thickness of each arm is about 6 mm so these arms look pretty durable and I don't think they're going to be very easy to break. The frame also has a nice feature which will help you to service the main components so what you need to do in order to open it up is to remove the two screws that are located over here, then disconnect the camera connector and as you can see now you will be able just to lift it like that and all the main parts are now accessible. Since this is a plug and play quadcopter you will have to provide your own receiver, that one already pre-configured it to work with SBUS and they also saved you some work and soldered this connector, so over here we can find the ground, then plus 5 volts, RX1 and TX4. Of course it also supports PPM so over here we can find the PPM pad and it also has a 3.3 volts out in case you need a receiver that needs low voltage such as a DSMX receiver. 
In terms of weight, the GTM 540 is a pretty heavy quadcopter and you can see that even without the propellers, the VTX antenna and the receiver, it weighs 343 grams. So it's heavier than my Hawk 5 which has been upgraded to 6 inch arms and already has propellers on and also a VTX antenna and weighs only 295 grams. The reason for the big weight difference is the 2308 motors and I can estimate that just these four motors on their own, including the wires, weigh around 140 grams. The next thing I'm going to do is to connect a Crossfire Nano receiver, then configure the quadcopter and beta flight and also upgrade the flight controller firmware to the latest beta flight version and use the recommended settings by Dayton, which I'm going to include down below. Then I'm going to head over to the field and test the GTM 540 using 4S, 5S and also 6S LiPo batteries and also with these two types of propellers, the included ones in the kit which are the Wind Dancer 5042 propellers and also the Gemfan Flash 5149 propellers. I hope you enjoyed the rest of this video and I'll see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
So as you could see, in my speed test, I measured a top speed of 160 km per hour using the Gemfan flash propellers and the CNHL 1000mAh 6S cyber battery. I could probably get a little bit faster if I didn't use such a big GPS module and I could also push the throttle further but I didn't want to completely destroy the battery and maybe also the motors. And by the way, even 20 minutes after the test, the battery was still quite hot. In terms of flight time, you can expect about 3.5 minutes using a 1300 mAh 4S and also 5S Lipo batteries. And if you're going to mount an action camera on top of the GTM 540, you can expect about 3 minutes of flight time. In terms of performance, I think that the recommended battery for this setup is a 5S Lipo battery, which in my opinion provided the best flight time and also performance. I don't think that the quadcopter felt so punchy using a 4S Lipo battery since these are pretty low KV motors. And if you're going to opt in for a 4S setup, you should definitely try the flash propellers which perform much better than the wind dancer, especially when using 4S Lipo batteries. Now I'm not really sure that upgrading to Beta Flight 3.5.2 and using the recommended settings that were sent to me by Dayton was such a good idea since the M540 suffered from a lot of prop wash. So what I intend to do is to revert back to the original settings and see how it's going to perform. And I'm also going to reach out to Dayton and ask them for maybe better settings because I'm not an expert in PID tunings. So maybe they could help. And if they do, I'm going to update the recommended settings and put it in the description box down below. If you're debating where to get the GTM 540 or the Tyrants 630, I can tell you that the GTM 540 is faster, at least in my experience, than the 630. But the VTX of the 630, even though it's the same VTX that the GTM 540 is using, is a little bit better, maybe because of the setup, maybe because of the position of the antenna, I'm not really sure. So the 630 is better as a long range setup even though the battery is not going to last for very long time because these are pretty power hungry motors so even though it might be a good long range platform if you can only run it for five minutes i think it kind of misses the point of a long range quadcopter so to sum it up if you're looking for more performance go for the gtm 540 and it is also a little bit less expensive than the tyrant 630 Priced at $230, I think that it gives an exceptional value for money. It is well built and the components are great. And if you're looking for a freestyle built quadcopter, I think they should definitely consider the GTM 540. 
As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about the GTM 540 and also, of course, about the 630, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.